So welcome to this uh, week's installment of What's Up with the Contributors. This time we're going to focus on the new Node.js 18 release. I have Beth Griggs with me, who's a core collaborator and member of the Technical Steering Committee. Before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Bethany Griggs, and I am a senior software engineer at Red Hat. And as part of my role, I get the opportunity to help maintain the Node.js runtime. Um, so I'm very active in the project, I'm on the technical steering committee, and also particularly active in the Node.js release working group. Thanks. So the project recently released uh, the Node.js 18 release. Can you tell us a little bit about the overall release process and schedule? Because that's kind of important for people to understand as well. Sure, yes. So the Node.js project aims to have a very predictable release schedule. So we have two major releases per year with the even numbered releases in April and the odd releases in October. And it's actually the even numbered release lines that get promoted to the long-term support state. So once they're in that state, they get the extended lifetime. So they get around 30 months of support. And that means that the Node.js 18 release that we've just shipped uh, will be promoted to long-term support um, this coming October. And um, so it will be one of the long-term supported release lines. Okay, great. So yeah, so this, uh this new release and it's going to be LTS in October. We always get the question like, what are the most inter in interesting or important features in the release? Yeah, sure. So with every major release of Node, we tend to pick up a new V8 um, engine update. So in this release, we'll be picking up a V8 10.1 initially. And it's actually through the V8 engine upgrades that we pick up any new JavaScript APIs. Uh, but what I do think is the key headline feature for this release, in my opinion, is that global fetch is available by default. So uh, in Node.js 18, there will be an experimental implementation of the fetch API. Um, it was added in Node 17, but it was behind a flag. And the implementation that we have is based on the Indici project and the work that happened in that group um, by many contributors to the project. Yeah, I think that that was really interesting and great to see that come in. We had a nice summit on um, modern HTTP as part of the next 10 effort where we're looking at like what's important to note as we go forward and, and how to be successful in the next 10 years. We had uh, a great discussion and sort of agreed need, we needed a high, high, high level HTTP API and then a lower level API with, you know, gives you more control, more performance tuning, that kind of stuff. And we agreed fetch was, pro was the best fit for the high level API. And, um, you know, it was great to see collaborators pull that in so soon after that, uh, that summit. So that's really a great headline feature. Uh, what about other features you think are interesting? Sure, another one of note is the uh, experimental built-in test runner um, that we will be um, building into Node.js 18. So that means in Node.js 18, by default, you will get a very minimal uh, test runner. Uh, and this is great because in the simple cases where you maybe don't want to go out and install a module from NPM, um, you'll be able to write some tests. And this test runner will um, output the standard tap format, so we hope we hope to get some good feedback on it. Yeah, it's great. I, I, I'm really happy to see all the experimental features that are coming in and are available in this release. Things like Fetch, Web Streams, and uh, the test runner. In particular, the things like Fetch that are bringing APIs that uh, are available in the browser and where it makes sense making something similar available in, in Node.js as well. So you can, you can use those similar APIs in both the front end and the back end. The other thing in this release I think is interesting to, to call out is OpenSSL v3. It's not new in 18, but it is the first LTS. So people who are upgrading from 16 to 18, it's the first time that they're they're going to see that. And you know, it is a it is a larger upgrade. Certainly, a v3 uh, aim is to be backwards compatible, but as always, things like algorithms are changed so that only more secure algorithms are supported and so forth. And so I think you know it's important for people to, to try out uh, 18 in advance, probably you know even more important than it is for, for every release. So sort of thinking, you know, talking about one of those things of trying it out in advance is, you know, what do you think that developers and end users can do to help out uh, in relation to this new release? Yeah, sure. So part of the intent of the current release line is to have it almost in a state where we're wanting that feedback in advance of it going to long-term support. So anyone playing um, with their apps, try upgrading them to Node 18 and see what happens. In some cases, maybe try adding it to your test matrix in advance. And that really helps because you're getting that feedback as the release line um, builds up. Um, and when it comes to promoting it to LTS, hopefully you'll be in a good position to upgrade. 
Um, also of note um, is Node.js 12 going end its life um, at the end of this month, April 2022. Um, so if you are on Node.js 12, it is also a good time to start uh, planning your upgrade path going forwards. Uh, but generally, the best thing um, folks can do is play with the release and give us feedback. Yeah, that feedback really is important for us to have a, have a solid release when we go LTS in October. So hopefully everybody can do that. So I think that's all the time we have for this time. Uh, thanks for people to coming to, to, to watch the video. And uh, Beth, thanks for coming to talk to us. And we hope we see everybody next time.